Good morning. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is David, and we will be reading from Hebrews chapter 1 through to chapter 2, verse 4. Let's read. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he also made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says, In the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You'll roll them up like a robe. Like a garment, they will be changed, but you remain the same and your years will never end. To which of the angels did God ever say, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we've heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit, distributed according to his will. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we, we do give you praise uh, for you. You are a great God and you, you speak. Uh, you have uh, spoken to us now in your word. And we pray that we will uh, continue to, to hear and listen and heed uh, these words. Uh, so uh, be with us now uh, as we uh, consider further uh, these words of yours. Amen. Well, our three teenager boys, uh, Pacific Islanders, uh, Philo, Ituni, and Samu, uh, set out on their small boat uh, to a neighbouring island, uh, as they uh, had done uh, many times before. But on this occasion, uh, they, they got off course and they started to, to drift and they were disorientated and they did not know uh, where uh, they were. And they just kept drifting and drifting in, in open ocean. And they were un unable to see any, any islands, any, any markers that they were familiar with. It was just all, all sea. And they just kept drifting. Uh, they had enough water for um, two days. Uh, so I'm assuming that's how long the trip uh, was meant to take. They ended up drifting for 50 days a distance of some 800 kilometres uh, before being rescued. Uh, the three boys survived. Uh, they, were, they were found. But it's dangerous to drift. Uh, perhaps you're at the beach uh, over these, um, these holidays and um, started between the flags, but before you knew it, you look up and you are now outside of the flags and you're wondering, how did that happen? Uh, it is easy just to drift. Uh, without even knowing it. 
Uh, as we begin this today and for this term, this, this book, uh, Hebrews, uh, we're given a, an image of the, the danger of drifting, uh, like a, a boat that is drifting uh, without an anchor. Uh, to drift is, is just to be carried along uh, to another place, uh, perhaps without your knowing. And there's slow, uh, gradual movements uh, that you might not even be aware of uh, until it's too late, and then you're wondering, how did you get here? And this can be true of the Christian life uh, as well. And so the writer of, of Hebrews uh, warns against the dangers of uh, spiritual drifting, uh, moving away from Christ. And it's dangerous because you don't need to do anything for it to happen. Uh, that's, that's the thing with, with drifting. It can just happen uh, to you. Drifting can just happen, but to stay the course, that can take real discipline. Now, you might know someone close to you um, who is in danger of drifting, drifting in their faith, and you see it, you, you know it. Uh, perhaps a friend or someone here at church, and it could be someone who used to come here regularly. Um, but now they've, they've given up the habit of, of regularly gathering with you, with, with one another. Perhaps at one time they were every week, then they were more sporadic, uh, and now uh, not at all. Uh, I can think of, of many uh, like that uh, over the years. Uh, and people who have uh, neglected Christ uh, for the pursuit of other things. Uh, for some, that's been a relationship, uh, and maybe with uh, an unbeliever. Uh, or it might be investing more in work uh, until work has then uh, taken them uh, away from any commitment whatsoever uh, to Christ. Uh, we can drift when we take our eyes uh, off Jesus. Uh, when other things take our attention uh, or, or our affections. Uh, when this happens, we can be prone to drift. We can drift because of sin uh, as well. Uh, there might be a, an area in your life where you've, you've let your guard down uh, and then you, you've just justified that it's okay. Uh, it's okay to act uh, that way. Even when we know it's not pleasing uh, to God and it's not how God would like us uh, to live. Uh, perhaps you know an area in your life where you've been tempted and you have uh, succumbed and it's become ongoing. Uh, that could be an indication of drifting. What Hebrews does, Hebrews gives us an anchor. Gives us an, an anchor for our soul uh, that we would not drift along in life or, or drift away from Christ. But instead that we would remain, that we would be closely uh, connected to Christ. For Christ is our anchor. Now, for me, the, the whole book of Hebrews is about the, the supremacy, the superiority of Christ. And a number of us got to hear the whole book on Wednesday night. Uh, Christ is superior. Whatever the alternative is, we see in this book that Jesus is better. Uh, that is what Hebrews is going to show us this term. And then it will give us reason to stay, to stick uh, with him. And the opening message that we see today is this. Listen to Jesus so that we do not drift away. That, that is the message, nice and simple. Listen to Jesus so that you do not drift away. Now, we, we have a God who speaks, uh, which is fantastic. And ultimately, he speaks, he has spoken through his son. And so we are to listen uh, to him. And these verses that we're, we're looking at this morning, they show us uh, the, the greatness of, of his son, of Jesus. Um, we sang about his greatness at the start. Uh, David introduced it. Uh, I know great is a word that I can overuse. Um, but what, what we see here about Jesus, he is truly great or awesome. Uh, in verses 1 to 3, uh, we see there the glory of Jesus uh, in verses 4 to 15, we see that he is superior to the angels. And then in 2, 1 to 4, uh, we then have the call 
uh, to pay attention, a careful uh, attention. Uh, this is a, a letter of sorts or a sermon. It's a, a written sermon. Uh, and it is one a big, heavy start. don't know if you noticed that uh, as it was read. There's no mention here of the author. Uh, of, there's no greeting of who it's to. It's just bam. It's just straight in. Just launches uh, straight in uh, to the greatness uh, of, of Jesus. Uh, like starting your day uh, with, with a big breakfast, like a, a big hearty breakfast, not just a bit of toast or, or cereal, a, a big uh, breakfast that you might find in your, your favourite cafe uh, or a, a good Indian breakfast like I um, enjoyed many of them just recently in, in Hyderabad. A little heavy, but, but they were good. <laughs> That's what this is. Big weighty things are said of Jesus, giving us reason to anchor our lives in him. So verse 1. Our God uh, is a, a God who speaks. In the past, uh, he spoke uh, through the prophets um, to our ancestors in uh, many various ways. But in these last days, now he has spoken to us by his son. God speaks today. God has spoken today by his son. That is how God speaks to us, through his son, whom we know as our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we'll do well to listen to him, not to neglect uh, his words, but to pay careful attention. So if you are someone who wants to hear God speak to you, what do you need to do? You need to listen to Jesus. Now we are told seven uh, amazing things about Jesus uh, that show his greatness and his supremacy. Uh, And so if if the Jewish believers at this time, if they were thinking that that Jesus was was maybe not all he was made out to be uh, and being Christian... Uh, wasn't all they thought it would be, Uh, they need to hear this. Uh, We we need to know just how great uh, the Son is. Uh, These seven things, verses 2 and 3. Now, you you might have missed this before. Like, it just launches into it, and they're quick fire. If you were just a few seconds slow in turning up your Bible before, you you probably missed it. Um, Or you, you might have heard it, but not actually heard it. So um, I'm going to run through them again. Um, So verses 2 and 3. Seven things. The first one is, he is inheritor. Uh, It says there, um, appointed heir of all things. Uh, This this is Jesus. And it makes sense. If he is God's son, then he's the inheritor. It is all his. It's all given to him. Secondly, it says that he is creator. Creator says, through whom he, God, made the universe. Jesus is the one in and through whom this whole world, whole universe has come to be. And thirdly, he is radiator, or uh, the, the radiance of God's glory. Uh, so just like the, the sun, S-U-N, and it's going to be uh, burning hot uh, today, uh, it, it radiates light and, and heat because it is its source. Well, so the sun, S-O-N, uh, radiates God's glory for he is indeed God uh, himself. Fourthly, he is representer. So it says he is the exact representation of his being. The sun is the exact uh, imprint of the nature of God. Uh, fifthly, he is sustainer. says he is uh, sustaining all things by his powerful word. The Son, Jesus, he is the one who keeps it all going. And he does so by his word. And then the sixth one, he is purifier. He is puri- providing purification for sins. Now, th- this, one, this one is slightly different, isn't it? Think about it. This This is talking about Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross. But in light of what we've just seen about him, isn't that extraordinary? That the the inheritor, the the creator, the radiator, the representer, the sustainer, 
would be sacrifice himself in order to, to purify us, our sins, and make us right with God. This is what the Son does. Lowers himself in such a way and goes to the cross so that our sin would be dealt with once and for all. And then lastly, um, having done this, says he is ruler, uh, sitting at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So having come and dealt with sin, uh, he is risen, he is exalted uh, at the right hand of the Father where he sits and he rules uh, today. This is the one that God speaks to us today. Uh, his Son, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. Great things are said about him. This is the one to whom God speaks to us. And we are called to listen to him. Listen to him. Otherwise, if we neglect him, then we are in danger of drifting. What kind of a listener are you? How do you go listening? Sometimes I hear the words, but I haven't listened. I can't always tell you what someone has just said. I don't know if that's ever the case in your home. What, oh. how, how, would, how would someone else describe what sort of a listener uh, you are? Here we are called to listen. And we'll go on in, in a moment to see that we are to pay careful attention. We see in these opening few verses the greatness of the Son. God speaks through him and we are to listen. Well, if that's not enough, the writer goes on and then shows uh, Jesus' greatness, his superiority uh, over the angels. Uh, and not just in one and a half verses, uh, this time there's 11 verses. He doesn't leave it at just verse 4 saying that he is superior to the angels, uh, but goes on and we have all these Old Testament verses one after the other, which, I don't know about you, makes me wonder why all this detail about the angels. So, so much is given to talking about the, the angels here and how the, the sun is, is superior uh, to the angels. Well, the angels, if we think about them, are angels highly honoured, um, were highly honoured, uh, angels, they are God's message bearers. Uh, they are close to God. Uh, they are in his presence. And when they appeared, uh, they spoke. I think people were always afraid. Uh, but people listened because the angels had a message from God. So people would listen uh, to them. This is saying and going in great length for us to see how superior Jesus is to the angels. And so if you were listening to the angels, then we'll make sure that you listen to Jesus because he's far superior. Jesus, uh, God has now spoken to us by Jesus, so we are to listen to him. Um, we're not going to work through uh, each of these uh, quotes, but you might like to do that at another time. Uh, but let me just make four quick points uh, of how we see that Jesus is. Uh, here, the Son is superior to the angels. And the first one is in verse 4 that he has a better name, verses 4 and 5. A better name than the angels. Uh, for he is God's Son. And so, being God's Son, he is better than the angels. Uh, verse 4 says there, uh, verse 5 um, To which of the angels did God ever say, You are my Son? But he's done that with Jesus. Uh, in verse 6, we see that Jesus is, is worshipped by angels. And so Jesus is superior to uh, the angels. Um, says there in verse 6, let all God's angels worship him. Uh, in verse 8, uh, the son is referred to as ruler God. It says, your throne, O God. Uh, talking about the, the son. Uh, and so he is... Uh, greater than uh, the his ruler over the angels. And then verse 10, uh, taking that also, talking about the, the son, uh, there he is creator. And as we've already seen, he is the creator. And so he's the one who has created 
the angels. The Son is superior to the angels in every way. And so I think that is why the writer here goes into such a detail to say, well, if you listen to angels, then make sure you listen to Jesus. Because this is now the way that God speaks through his Son. And so we must listen. Who are the voices that you listen to each and every day? In your home, at work, school, study? You might have a favourite podcast. might be um, some social media influencer that you pay a lot of attention to. But God speaks by his Son and we are to listen to him. That is the response that is called for. Uh, chapter 2, verse 1. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just, just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit, distributed according to his will. So we must listen to Jesus so that we do not drift away. Uh, he is our anchor. Uh, he is truly great uh, in every way. Uh, he is our inheritor. He is the, the creator, the radiator, the representer, um, the sustainer, the purifier, and the ruler. He is greater than the angels, and so we must listen and pay careful attention to him. For by believing and trusting in him, there is the great salvation, uh, which is spoken about there in verse Verse 3. Uh, so let, let me ask, um, we're just over a month uh, into this new year. Uh, are you in danger of drifting in any way? Are you in danger of, of not listening uh, to Christ Jesus or, or not obeying him in any way? Uh, five weeks ago, uh, I, I asked you, um, what is your plan uh, to be listening to Jesus this year. Uh, so that, that was five weeks ago. Uh, to be reading and reflecting and praying God's word. Uh, that we would be a people who, who hear and listen uh, and act upon uh, what God is teaching us. Uh, so maybe now is a time just to pause and reflect and to see, well, how, how are you doing uh, in that? Are uh, there... There are some people uh, amongst us who, who do call this their church, who, who we haven't seen yet uh, this, this year. Um, not you, because you're here. Um, but to not prioritise meeting uh, with, with God's people, uh, with Christ, uh, around his word, uh, could also be an, an indication uh, that someone uh, is drifting. Now, it can be easy, though, to, to come together, uh, to read God's word, um, but not to listen to it or not to be changed uh, by it. Uh, and I know that's, that's something that I'm aware of myself. Um, every day I will read God's word, um, but am, am I listening to it? Am I slowing down and reflecting upon it and really hearing what God is saying to me? There is a difference, isn't there, of sort of hearing or reading something, but truly listening uh, to it. Jesus says at the, the end of his Sermon on the Mount, uh, he says there to, to listen or, or to hear his words is then to, to put them into practice. Uh, that is the person who builds his house on the rock. So where we make no effort uh, to do anything with God's word uh, in response to it, uh, that could be an indication uh, that we are in danger uh, of drifting. 
uh, or where there is no repentance in our life could also be an indication uh, that we are, are starting to drift. Now, I wonder if uh, for some uh, who are here, and particularly some who might come from a, another uh, faith background, um, temptations that you might face uh, in, in returning to, to old ways, old, old customs or, or beliefs, um, perhaps to be uh, accepted by, by family or, or community. And perhaps at times you, you might be tempted to see Jesus as, as just another uh, God. Just another God among the many, many gods, Jesus is another God, rather than being the one true God. But what we see here, Jesus is not just another God. God speaks to us by his Son. Jesus is God's Son. He is God. God speaks to us through him. We are to listen to him. Oh, well, let me conclude. Uh, a few of us were part of CMS Summer School, uh, either here or up in Katoomba, uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, and on the Sunday evening, uh, Archbishop Kanishka Rafael, um, he, was, he was asked there, uh, what is it that people can be praying uh, for him? Uh, which I thought, uh, that's a good question. Uh, I, I pray uh, for Kanishka each week. Um, but yeah, what, what do you pray? But his response was interesting. Uh, his response was, pray that I would stay close with Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Uh, so that's our archbishop. That is what he uh, would value our prayer in. Or in, in other words, that, that Christ would remain my anchor, to put some, some words in his mouth. <laughs> to be close with Jesus. If Christ is our anchor, we will be close with Jesus and we will not drift. So what does it mean for you, for Christ to be your anchor? Uh, is he your anchor? Uh, there's a, a few images going to show you. Uh, which of these might be uh, true uh, for you? Is your life uh, like this, a boat that is secure? Because you, you know the greatness of Jesus. You're trusting him. You know the, the great salvation that is yours in him. And so Christ is your anchor. And so you, you are doing well. And maybe you've been trusting Jesus for a good, good number of years. Keep going. Keep Christ as your anchor. Uh, may that be so for us all. But perhaps for some here, maybe at the moment, maybe you know that you, you are drifting. There's one more. Hopefully it's not this bad. If you know that you are drifting, then maybe this is a message that you, hear, you need to hear today and to return to Christ, uh, to come back to him. Sort it out, whatever it is. And maybe to help you, you need to let someone know so that they can help you as well. Because that, that's what happens when you, when, you meet, when you get lost or you drifted too far. We mightn't be able to do it on our own, which is why we have one another. Now, if you're in the boat that is secure, uh, maybe you're quite aware of other boats around you which seem to be drifting. Is there something you can do this week uh, to help one of those people to come back to Christ or to make sure that their, um, their anchor is Christ? Maybe this week uh, it's a phone call to them, uh, reaching out to them in some way so that they would not be drifting but they would be firmly trusting Christ. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you that you are a great God and that you are a God who speaks and that you have spoken to us by your Son. And so help us to listen to him. Help us to, to really pay careful attention to him. And Father, I do pray um, for... Any among us here today uh, where we might be drifting and in danger, Father, help us to return to Christ. And may we help one another in this.
And Father, for any here today who, who don't yet know Christ, Father, help them to see that Jesus is your son, that he is the one uh, who has come to make you known. You have spoken through him. So may they, may we all listen to him and receive salvation in his name. Amen.